Hi fellow engineers and we're back doing another video about animation. Last video we actually looked at was actually using a master sketch to drive our kinematic animation and this video I'm going to be putting some cogs together and actually creating an animation with those and creating the teeth binding of two different cogs at different ratios and how to calculate those and how to animate those in your part workbench or part design workbench. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've started a new FreeCAD um, file here and I'm going to go to the part design. Now this is what the um, gear tool is actually accessible from and it's accessible from the part design drop down here and we'll have in Involute gears, so we can click on that and actually start creating our body. But the first thing I'm going to do is create a new body and actually add the gear into this body here. And I'm going to go with number of teeth of 20. And I'm going to apply that. Oops, press OK and I'm going to right click and rename this body so we know what gear this is. So this is the 20 gear. Now I'm going to create enough one in a new body. So create a new body there. And I'm going to go up to part design and click on the involute gear there and I'm going to create a number of teeth on this one for 10. So as you can see the size of the actual gear has changed. I'm not going to bother about these down here, I'm just going to concentrate on number of teeth. So the size of the gear has shrunken down and I'm going to OK that. Now first of all we'll rename this to know so we know what it is. So this is a 10 gear so now we want to move this so if I jump into part I'm going to try to move this like a, a normal part so if I double click on it you can see we can't actually move this gear so I've double clicked on the gear here you can't actually move it so we'll have to move it a different way so let me just cancel out here and go back to part design was it on part before? Double check that. Yeah, I was on part before. So let's jump jump into part design. And I'm going to go to the model view here on the combo view. And I'm going to have a look at the properties. And I'm going to click on the 20 gear. Let's just give myself a bit of space because what I'm looking for, let's get rid of this Python window for stars. That, we will need that later. What I'm looking for is this placement here. So if I open this out, this shows the placement of the, those, actually, those actual gears in that virtual space there on our, in our 3D space. So I'm looking for the position here and I want to open this up. So now we can see the X, Y and Z placement of that gear, that 20 tooth gear one there and I am going to increase the x-axis and what you'll see is the gear will move so I'm going to move this right the way over to the right hand side and I'm just going to have it so the teeth are interlinking there because I'm going to change the rotation slightly and if we go up to angle and we're just going to change that rotation so it meshes with those teeth there so just adding 9 onto there to actually allow it to mesh there so that's all good and now that I've done that I'm just going to click on the gear it's the, the body itself and I'm going to hit pad and just pad these by the default 10 mil and the same with the 10 gear here, we'll have to toggle the active body on that one. 
to make that body active before we actually allow the pad. So that's all our padding done. Okay, that. We'll just tilt it to see what it looks like in, in our 3D view. Yep, I'm happy with that. Back to our top view. And we'll just bring this on page. We're going to use the actual um, fits the whole contents on the screen tool here to actually bring it on screen. Now I'm just going to zoom in slightly so we can actually see the gears more centered. So now we've done that, what we need to do now is create an animation for this using our Python macros. So if you jump up to macro at the top, um, let me first explain what's going to happen. So I'm going to turn this wheel uh, clockwise and this should turn in relation to that turn. So what I'm going to show you now is actually how to do that in the macro and what we should see in our finished animation is this traveling around in a clockwise rotation and this traveling around at the correct speed in the counterclockwise rotation. And there's a simple formula for getting these ratios correct. We just got to remember which one of these is is our, our, our gears and how many teeth they have. So we've got 20 gear and then 10 gear. This is why I've renamed them to that name. So what we'll do now is jump into macro, click on macros, and I'm going to create a new macro, and I'm going to call this the animation. So now we've got our blank macro screen up, and I'm going to start putting the base of our macro in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is type from I side import the uh, Qt core, pronounced Qt. It's the actual Qt library, um, cross platform library that's used in C and it's an open source library that's used in many things. Uh, I think FreeCAD might be actually programmed in this. In this uh, this library as well. So that's our import. The next thing I'm going to do is create a number of variables. So the first one I'm going to create is to hold the number of teeth that the first gear has. So gear 20 equals oops, gear 20 teeth equals oops, 20 teeth. Obviously, and gear 10 teeth equals 10 teeth. And you'll see why we do this in a minute. The other thing that I want to actually put in there is our current rotation. We rotated one of those gears around slightly. So I'm going to jump back. I believe it was the Gear 20, yeah, it was gear tw 20, the 22th gear rotated by 9 degrees. So I'm going to add that to our macro as well. So gear 20 angle offset equals 9. So that gives us a start. And the next thing I'm going to do is define a method which will be called each time our Python script updates. So the method's name I'm going to call update. And because it's Python, white space matters, so we'll tab in to actually add the content of our, uh, our method. And I want to pull in all my variables, so global gear 20 teeth. Gear 10 teeth and gear 20 angle offset. And underneath, I'm just going to just come out of that 
method now, leave a line. So we know our method is the method actually stops there. And we're going to create a variable called timer. And that's going to be equal to the Qt core. And in there, there's a dot QTimer. And I'm going to close brackets. So we sign the timer as a Qt uh, Q timer. And the next thing I want to do is connect up the event on that timer, the timeout event, to actually run this update statement. So timer dot timeout, the event's called dot connect and add the timer. Oh, sorry, not timer, the method in here, which is update. So each time this timeout is timeout event is raised, the update statement will run. Our next line will add the start of the timer, so timer.start, and we want to make the timer tick, well, the timer of timeout every one millisecond. So the timer will actually start and run for one millisecond, and then it will time out and cause the update function to fire. At that moment, we just pulled in the global um, variables in our update function, and we're not using any, anything in there. So we're just going to go for that time being. And I also want a count in here. And we're going to increment that count here. So we can call the variable whatever we want, but I've just called it count for the time being. Um, actually, I'll just call it R. That's for rotation. And I don't want it equals one. I want it plus equal one. So we're incrementing in R by one each time there. So just going through, just checking to make sure that everything's okay. So oh, the one of the other things that I haven't put in here is I need to bring in R as well. Because R's got to be used within here. So I'm going to place my first gear here and my second gear here, so gear, gear 10 and gear 20. So to get those into here, I'm going to go into my uh, part design and I'm just going to alter the actual angle of these just to get the command to appear down here. So I can do that by clicking on the actual gear 10 and going down to placement, clicking in this field and clicking the three dots at the end and just moving down to the rotation, making sure this is on rotation axis with angle and changing the angle just by something like one degree or 0.01 would be good and then if I hit enter I can actually get the command to actually change the rotation and that's what we want so this is for the 10 tooth gear let's place that in here and we're going to do the same just make sure that's tabbed over so it's in there and we're going to do the same for the other one as well jump into here Click our 20 tooth, find placement, two dots on the end, change the angle. See at the moment it's 9, just change it to 9.01. Hit enter to apply it. We get it, the actual command down here. Copy that command and place it within your macro. So there we go, so that's in there now. I'm just going to bring this over. So the next thing is to actually write the formula to change this macro. To actually change the gear rotation. Now that's quite simple. The first gear we're going to rotate under the increment of R. So this will be our driving gear, the gear with 10 teeth. 
So if we look along here and look for the 0.01 we looked in, so we look at app dot vector on our app dot rotation, app dot vector. This tells you what where the vector we're rotating around. So I'm rotating around the last one where there's one in there. So x, y, z. So z is raised high to one. So we're rotating around the z axis, and it's rotate. It's got rotation there of 0.01. So I'm going to set that one to r. So that will rotate R now, so we can just test that. Come down here, place, place the macro into our Python console, press enter, and we can see this is rotating. Now this is rotating, now this is actually rotating anti-clockwise. We want it to rotate clockwise. So if I just stop that, timer dot stop. Now we can either do one of two things, is either decrement R or can put a minus sign in front of R, copy that and paste it in there, hit enter. So that's now rotating around the right way. Stop that again. Now comes the rotation of this gear. So we want to rotate this a fraction of this one. So if we go back, so we think of this, we've got 20 teeth here and 10 teeth here. So this has to rotate 10 divided by 20 to actually get the rot correct rotation speed. But remember we've got to times that by r. So it would be r times 10 divided by 20. So go over here. Gear two, and I'm going to set up a new variable called cog rotation, and I'm going to set that one to R for the time being. I'll show you what reason why, and I'm going to place that cog rotation in where we've got 9.01. Now remember that we've got a gear offset here as well. So the first thing we've got to do is add that to here uh, our rotation as well. So we first start off with the gear offset angle. Otherwise our animation will not be in the correct placement when we actually start running the script. So I take that now and run it. We can see what's happened. As you can see, they're moving in the right direction, but they're not not moving quite correctly yet. So this one's actually moving faster than what it should be. So we stop the timer, jump over back over to our animation, uh, sorry, our macro, and we can add our former in here. So this is correct, but we need to say r times gear teeth how many teeth that's in gear 10 divided by how many teeth there are in gear 20 and I'm just going to bra put a bracket around these just to make sure So that should work now. So control A, control C, paste it in. We'll have a look. And now we've got our animation fully working. And if I tilt this so you can give it a bit more depth, you can see our cogs are now animating correctly. And what I'm going to do is take these away so you can actually see the full code there. So we've got all our, our teeth sizes set up there, our offset and the increment of R and our update feature, update functions in there that's running.
every timeout of the timer to produce our end result. And that's it. And that's how you would animate two cogs in three cags.